What is up, people? We are here with the Oars Podcast, also known as the Ops of Rap Podcast. I'm joined with Perry. Perry, got something to say to the people? Man, how's everybody doing today on this great Tuesday afternoon? Had to do this for the second time. Y'all not going to catch this on the playback, but I had to do the, redo the intro because I didn't have my mic unmuted on OBS. I had it muted because of uh, settings I have when I go through my live reactions and all that. But that's beside the point. Uh, we already talked about some things uh, in the episode. We're not going to repeat it, but I think I'll just move on to the next point. Um, we also saw some of the Yuki and Machi moment. It was it was just like one moment, pretty much. Uh, what did you think about that? Man, I love Machi and Yuki's like interactions because she's like, <laughs> like she, she's she's kind of like she's shy, but she's like blunt at the same time. So just Yuki's reaction to that is just like. Him slowly open up to her and her opening up to him. Is, I just love that relationship. I think that's like my favorite on screen relationship. I like to see on t- on like on screen. Mm. I I still think it's probably Reen and uh Hat- or I was about to say Hattori Hasuhara, but I'm I'm liking this relationship just because I like to see Yuki uh a lot more vocal because that was something that's always like been bothering him he, he'll look to kill or somebody and get jealous of them because they are they may they may be like you know opposed to people initially but they can open up easily and uh make make connection with with people uh like it's second nature to, to them so I, I think it works both ways with those characters because they're both reserved so like when they click they're able to uh like push each other to talk more and be more open I love the fact that she was like run after him. She's like, whew, whew. You, you yeah. My you, but, you know, you, you took this weird ass um, route. I couldn't find you. And that's the that's the funny thing about it too. Like you, I I can't imagine like Yuki not even knowing that she's chasing us. Like Yuki just casually strolling along, and then Machi is running all over the school looking for this nigga the entire time. Like that's that's funny to think about. But uh, with with the Yuki and Machi thing, and also the Toru and kill thing we saw that they both received uh white flowers that were meant to be given to the seniors on graduation did you find any meaning in that because not only did they get flowers but also akito from shigure uh i i really see, i i kind of see some i kind of see some meaning but mostly just because like uh because it was like them giving them something that i don't know how to, how to, how to say this I think it was. I get. I get the meaning of it, but I can't like really explain it. I think it was basically was like they was giving them something to like show their connection to them, mm-hmm. to show how they really mean to them. Did you find any meaning in theirs? Uh, Yuki, Yuki and Machi, uh, their their flowers being white, uh, along with Kyo and Toru and Shigure and Akito's, th- that flower being red. Yeah, I think one similarism you can probably get to is like white is always shown as purity. So it's kind of like a like the love is pure, like it's pure and genuine. And I think the red flower is more like dangerous, um, aggressive love, where it's not really like as pure as the white rose. Yeah. Like a, there's a something about roses being like a symbolize something, like symbolize symbolize like p- passion. Mm-hmm. See, it, it's 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 odd because. Uh, at the bit beginning of the episode, we saw that Shigure gave Akito this flower. And I looked up the flower. I don't know if this is actually the flower, but uh, it is called the Ke- Camel- Camellia? 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 The Camellia flower or the Subaki flower. And uh, I think it comes in three different colors, white, red, and um, uh, pink. And they said that the red one is supposed to symbolize love. So it that that was just the beginning of it. I don't think that applies to uh, the flower that Shigure gave Akito uh, later in the episode in the present time, just because um, is, you know, that was like some paper paper th- thing, making a paper. Uh, but I think it was just calling back to that moment. Um, but I think the difference in the contrast in the white flowers and the red flowers, one being pure and one being like kind of like tainted or a uh, different type of love. I think that can also apply as well. Yeah. Uh, I do not want to get to the bit moment yet. It's, it's something else I want to talk about. 
Oh, oh man, let's talk about Momiji because we we saw him in this episode, and that nigga still has not grown. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He says yeah, I, yeah. I wonder is it gonna be like, like you know, like after after the seniors graduate and and Toronto become actual seniors, would that be that little time, that little summer summer like jump? Would that be his new design? Yeah, that that's probably going to be it. It's it's so bad too because I've been seeing I seen like manga panels of Toru and <laughs> Momiji standing together, and from the manga panels, uh, in different scenes, like for example, um, I'm trying to think of the specific scene that happened. Well, let, let let's just talk about this episode. They were they were literally the same height uh, in a manga, so. There's a there's a difference between the anime and the manga when it comes to Momiji's height. He kind of got like the Goten and Trunks syndrome in Dragon Ball Super, where that nigga doesn't grow. I'm hoping that you're right that during like their third year that they finally age up Momiji, uh, cause that that's kind of like that's real glaring. Um, but yeah, like just let my son grow, please. Yeah, yeah, because I, 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 I feel like it'd be more jarring if he grew like not, this episode. He just come back like six feet taller. Like, damn, nigga, what happened to you? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's gonna be to me. It's gonna be jarring either way. Like mm-hmm. they would, they would, they would have to do some type of time skip. Like even if they do it like a like a three month, four month time skip, I still feel like it would be jarring. But it's something that I feel like they had to bite the bullet on and just do it because. I I rather you I rather it be jarring and you actually have him grow, mm-hmm. than um, than you not let him grow at all. Yeah, I rather just okay. say that. Uh, QR W six said, "What up, Sotsky? What up, QR?" Uh, Rant said, you can't, "We can't hear the rat. You should be able to hear him now." Uh, QR said, "The opening ending theme this season felt spoilery." I have not watched the ending yet. Have you watched the ending at all? Uh no 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 no, but I, I but I watched like the first two seconds of the ending, and, I, and then like I think I noticed that like the flower that um Kyo gave gives her in this episode is in the opening ending. Okay. Ending. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I, I stayed away from the ending, so I may listen to it one day without like actually looking at the visuals. But I've been told that it's kind of spoiler spoilerish, mm-hmm. so I'm staying away from the ending. Um, what else I want to say? Um, we saw. We, we there there was a real good scene because I'm I'm still trying to avoid the Shigure thing since that's big. Yeah. There was this one scene I like though when Toru is washing dishes and like she brings her hand up to her face and this is when she's still thinking about like uh her not being able to t- talk to anybody. Well, no, this was when she remembered uh Reen. She yeah. remembered that Reen is someone she could talk to about this and uh she could kind of like completely forgot about her. Uh, she brung her hand up to her face, and I I really like the scene too because it just looks like Toru is crying, but that's mm. you know it's from her washing the dishes. I thought that was real creative, and it it kind of shows you that Toru is going through a lot right now, but she's someone who doesn't, uh, she's not open with her feelings. She keeps yeah. it she keeps it in her chest a lot of the times. I, I kind of feel sad for her because like I feel like if she'd ask any like if she'd ask like Yuki that question. He would um he would have gave her like a better response than Kyo. I'm like, damn Kyo, yeah, one chance, man. You could have gave her like a like a good response to her question, but you had to get all like his response was so weird too. Like nigga, how about ask his top three questions? Like what? Yeah. Why are you wilding out on her? <laughs> yeah, I th- but it, it's it's something that troubles Kyo, so I can't mm. really blame him for that. It's something that's still like they they both both Toru and Kyo have some things that they don't want to talk about, and I think especially stuff involving the curse and the zodiacs is something that he does not want to open the lid on and with toru it's a lot of things that she keeps in and we already talked about it like anything to do with her mother when it comes to stuff involving her death or even her father she does not talk about at all so you know with the thing with kill i don't really blame him for that but yeah it would have been nice if Kyo would be the one that she could like unleash on, but you know, yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. 
uh, one 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 of the weird scene I got from this episode was like when Yuki was like doing his school rounds and he was looking at the group of kids uh, playing around playing. It's it's always so weird to me because it it feels like Yuki's saying like I have no friends. I'm like wait, but you have Utani and Hana and and uh, what's called and Hana. It, it feels it feels so weird to me because it feels like he's, they're trying to portray him as not having friends, but he has friends. You know what I mean? I felt like when I seen that scene, I felt like. Because he, he looked at them and he said, like, they're having fun. I don't yeah. think that's, like, trying to sh- portray him as lonely. I think it's actually the opposite. Because if you notice those five group of kids, like, just the the ratio to uh, uh, boys to girls, it's the exact <laughs> ratio for the student council. It was three boys and two girls. And it's kind of, like, uh, a reflection of Yuki, Kakeru, Nao, Machi, Kimi. So I mm-hmm. think this. Like it, the, yeah, I, I guess the tone of the scene was weird, but I, I again, I think it's more of them um, trying to draw a parallel uh, to like a future future events for Yuki, like them having fun as uh, as he becomes a third year in the student council. That's what I think, at least. Okay, I can see that way as well. All right, I think we danced around the topic enough. All uh, right. Let's talk about your boy or or Sidarius boy because he really fucks with Shigure. Hey, let's talk, man. Shigure Hendrix, man. He had that future, uh, he had that future energy this episode, man. <laughs> oh man, where where you want to go? You want you you can go any place you want, man. All right, let's go talk between him and Kureno from like from like last season that we we got the like the full context of. Yeah, he, he, he was he was like man, he, he was like nigga, I'll, I'll fuck you. Cause you, you, you fuck with my girl that I like. <laughs> like he, he just really real do hate Kueno, which I don't. I, I don't blame him, but it's just so funny the way the energy he pulls out. Like he like because he, he has the energy. Like I don't really care about Akito, but I care though. Yeah, yeah. that shit is so fucking funny to me. Yeah, it's it. Kureno is in a weird spot because. It's not like he is in love with Akito. We know his heart is somewhere else completely with mm-hmm. Utani. So he's just like, he's literally just there. Like that nigga is just there. He's there out of sympathy for Akito. Yeah. So it's it's funny that he gets hatred from Shigure, but he's like, he's like, if it's, well, I guess it is his choice still, but mm-hmm. if he didn't feel responsible for or Akito, uh, like, because, you know, she practically begged him to stay. If yeah. he didn't feel that responsibility, he wouldn't. He wouldn't even be there. So it's like, <laughs> like if if Kareno was more vocal about his feelings, I feel like he'd be like, "Nigga, I didn't. I don't want to be with Akito's stank ass. I'm trying to be yeah. with Tani. Like, the fuck. <laughs> hey, man. I, I gotta get me a little shoddy on the side, man. I'm trying to. Go, I'm trying to go there. Yeah, man. I don't. I don't want to be <laughs> like, like. I get abused. Like, you want to take this abuse? That's you. Like, take yeah, her. Yeah. <laughs> take her. That it's funny because it's like how, how Shigure like, like oh so that's the reason he chose you it was because you better than me nigga because you know because you free yeah. that's the only reason <laughs> <laughs> oh that's that's another thing too uh, Shigure said that he didn't know but he had a feeling about that do you yeah. what do you think wh- okay why do you think he had a feeling like that I I think he had I, I think for me I think it was his way of like. Rationalized why Akito chose Kureno and was mm. kept Kureno close to him besides him. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I, th- I think that's actually a good, good, uh, good reason for him to suspect Kureno, mm. and it's it's especially bad because Akito keeps Kureno with her pre- pretty much anytime she goes out. It, like, yeah, yeah. So it's like she she keeps the she tries to keep the zodiacs close, but obviously it feels like she plays favorites with Kareno especially and we know the reason why because the curse is broken so she feels extra insecure when it comes to him um so maybe Shigure picked up on that and realized like okay maybe something is up with him rather than Akito just loving him or something like that so yeah Cause I think they even not in this episode but they kind of mentioned that like Kareno don't really even talk to the other Zodiacs like that yeah yeah, he's just weird in general, so yeah. it's not surprising that someone got a vibe like that from him. Because I think mm-hmm. Shigure asked Hattori too, like, do you think, like, he was like, do you think something's weird with Kareno? Mm-hmm. I think he asked him something like that in season two. 
Um, uh, Rant said, hey, man, shout out to the big cheese. Hey, that's Cheddar Chase 69 to you, boy. Okay, all right. Well, um, well, Yandere Shiki says, Shigure is extra creepy in a remake. Oh, so that's another thing we got to talk about. That age gap, boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I think that flashback, Shigure had to be like, what, 16, 14? Akito was like seven. Bro. <laughs> Dog. Hey. Man, uh, Fruits Basket is killing me with these age gaps, man. Yeah, I think you're not care. Yeah, man. Bro, what no. is this? Is this the third one? Oh. Uh, yeah, then I guess you said it. I guess it is. Yeah, because we, we got we, like the biggest one, Kareno Utani. We mm-hmm. got this one between Shigure and Akito. And then we have the Hatsuhara Reen one. Yeah, but the, yeah, 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 yeah. That was kind of wild too. I think she she was like a freshman freshman of college, and he was like a last year in his middle school year when it when it was dating. Yeah, so we got these are pretty big age gaps. I consider anything like where we there's more than three years. I consider that like a big age gap. So you know, it, it doesn't like now it's fine. Like there's mm-hmm. a relationship between Akito and Shigure, but Shigure admitted that he loved Akito in the flashback so it's it's weird i'm not excusing it but it's something that exists so it's you know we can't really harp on it too much or anything like that if you want to cancel shigure i get it <laughs> but this nigga should get canceled for something different because he that nigga said where your mom's at oh, yeah, where your mom's at man come on <laughs> you know, where, your, where your mom's at <laughs> <laughs> i couldn't believe it man i when, when, when Akito said, "Oh my God!" Like I, 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 Akito felt like she she felt like uh, just a regular girl almost mm-hmm. in that situation because she was like, she was like, "Who was that girl you was with?" And then you know she girl is like, uh, oh. "That that's a girl I work with." Blah blah blah. And then she was like, "Oh, I thought you slept with any girl you meet up with." And then she girl like, uh, like like she she girl already knew what was coming. He was like, "Ah oh, shit." And then she's like, she's like, he's like, nah, I didn't sleep with her. And then she's like, oh, but you slept with her. And she she said that woman. And when she said that, I paused the video. I said, please don't tell me. I said, please don't tell me. She's talking about rain. Please. (laughs) Nah, man, she's getting making rounds right here, man. He making rounds. (laughs) Oh, man. It puts the the Shigure, like, have playfully nature in a deeper context because it's like cause we talk. I remember we talked to Tori and everything. Mm-hmm. He really about this shit, man. He really about it. It's okay. So yeah. I don't want to go over like who's right or wrong in the situation, mm-hmm. but Shigure did this because Aikito slept with Kareno. We yeah. seen we seen as much as season two at the end of season two. Um, it was a quick little thing where we saw them kissing, so we can, you know, we we understood what was implied there. So it happened. Uh, I can totally even deny it. She pretty much rationalized it by saying the zodiacs are her possessions, but I don't know if it's just me. But do you feel like there's something more to Shigure sleeping with Rain other than trying to get revenge? Uh, I, I guess it could co. Huh. Other than revenge, I don't know. Cause I feel like I feel like, like Shigure, like cause I think it's episode kind of reformed, like what kind of personality he really has. Like that nigga right into the core. Like that that nigga said, sometimes man, I love something. I just want to watch that junk get crushed under my hands. I was like, damn, Shigure. See, he really has dog ass nigga. He he's grimy for sure. Yeah, but like I don't want to say. I feel like. I feel like he, the of course, I feel like he was telling the truth when he said, I did this because you slept with Kareno. I feel mm-hmm. like that's the truth. I feel like he, he wanted to hurt Akito in a way that was like devastated because like, yeah. it's, it's devastating because she's her mother, but also because of how her mother treats her. Mm-hmm. And Shigure has to be aware of this because when he slept with her, it's not far from when the series started Uh, based on um something that, I, I got to give a shout out to my fruits basket guru, my fruits basket sister, Francesca. She pretty much pieced together like this happened uh, around like a year before the series start um, started. So. This, she, like considering that time, Shigure has to be aware of how Akito feels about her mother, because the way they talk, 
these issues didn't happen between uh, Akito and her mother uh, when the Shigure cheating thing happened. These exist, these problems existed way before then because Akito feels like abandoned by uh, Rain. Mm. So he knows that he knows about that, and he still slept with her. So that's just got that's like an extra, extra nail in the coffin. But I feel like when it comes to, because this would be a this would be a real good parallel to something that happened in season two. I feel like Shigure slept with Rain not only because it would have hurt Akito, but I feel like he was also trying to get information on how to break the curse. And <laughs> this, cause mm. rain would be more than willing. Like she would have like, even if this is not true, she would have like, it's believable that rain would sleep with Shigure because that's just, that seems like the type of person she is. Like she's filling up on everybody. She felt up on Hattori the first episode. Yeah. Um, but I feel like it's something to do. Like Shigure was trying to find out information on the curse and it would be a really good parallel to something that happened in season two with Reen. Remember when Reen went up to Shigure and she practically offered up her body to Shigure yeah. uh, t- to figure out what he knew about the curse. I feel like that would be such a good parallel and like role reversal. Cause then you would have Shigure in the same situation that Reen was in. Uh, mm-hmm. asking, uh, of course, this time, Rain about information on the curse, and he was willing to sleep with her for information like that. Yeah. I have a question. Do you think um, Rain knows something about the curse? Like, she gave him information about the curse? Rain or Rain? Uh, Rain. Yeah, I feel like she knows something about the curse. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. I think I think so, too, just because I, I feel like she, I feel like Shigur is someone who's, like, Tor was staying with them, and, and like, off no place to stay. I feel like that's that's kind of like Shigure, like oh, oh, print ultimate plan, like in the background, trying to get it set up. Yeah, it's <clears throat> rain right now. Is it's, it's seeming like she is like the big obstacle, which is weird because she's also the person who wants to wants Akito to be free, or not 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 that she cares about Akito, but she feels like the bonds between her and the Zodiacs are unnatural. So mm-hmm. so it's kind of weird to think of her as the villain because you would think that she would be like the ultimate ally in a situation yeah. like that. But you can't see that just because of how Akito and her relationship is. Like they mm-hmm. both seem like they have something dark about them. Um yeah. Cause I, I feel like we still don't know what happens to Akito if like all the bonds go away. Like, cause like, cause those are probably bonds that's been with like the Soma clan for like generation, generation, generation. So like, what happens when they're all gone? Like, what happens when when like like a person like Akito has to like actually make um, genuine bonds? Like, what happens with that kind of thing? Yeah, and it seems like the curse affects her uh, strongly mentally. Cause we saw after Reno's curse broke, she completely her personality flipped and i yeah. don't think that was a conscious thing i don't think she i don't think she acted like that just because she felt like i gotta keep Kareno close i feel like the curse affected her, like something spiritually inside her that messed up her psyche so if the cur- the curses break uh if that happened with just one person breaking free from the curse we don't know what's going to happen if all of the bonds are broken so i I, I'm still very interested in how the curse breaks, but I think that's another question uh, down the line for the future <clears throat> because we're seeing Akito being brought up in a more sympathetic light. So <clears throat> while I think she's not going to be a character that's going to be forgiven, mm-hmm. I think we, we can understand her a lot better, which is going to make the impact of, or the question of how does the bonds affect Akito when they're broken is going to be, very interesting to see that because I think uh, the more they make Aki, the more we learn about Akito and Rain, the more we kind of feel bad for her. So, uh, if it were to affect her in a fatal way, I think it's going to hit a lot more considering what they've been building up with Akito and Rain. Yeah, because I'm really, I'm kind of ready for that the Akito flashback when we get like her perspective of everything, like when, like when she, when Karina found out, when she finds out Karina curse breaks, and like when she snaps on um, Yuki, and like just, just the things she does to like keep the Zodiac members close to her and not, not far from her. <clears throat> and it's interesting you say that because I don't feel like, although we've seen Akito in flashbacks, 
we haven't actually seen Akito's perspective in flashbacks. It's yeah. always been through somebody else. Like we we seen Yuki, we seen uh, Shigure, um, we seen even Kyo when he transformed. It, we never really get any monologue from Akito or anything like that. So I think getting her perspective before she was turned like this, I think that would. I think that would change our perspective on Akito or at least like uh, the general public. Cause I, I feel like we both realize that Akito is like not pure evil, but some people mm. may still have like their reservations on that. Yeah. 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 I can see that as well. Uh, QRW six says six, eight, six year age gap, but Shigure tapped that. And the age gap between rain and Shigure is even worse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh my god, we're probably be like what forty something, and she grows like twenty six, twenty seven. Yeah, I think yeah, I think he's twenty. I think he's twenty. Yeah, twenty seven or twenty eight. I feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that boy should grow really a motherfucker. For like, like, bro, like that nigga's just that nigga is on some other shit, man. God, it, so I, I just, I just, just imagine like, uh, I just fucked your. And some Gucci flip flops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we didn't even talk about that. Oh yeah, we didn't yeah, even yeah, talk yeah. about that. He he smashed Akito. Oh. Yeah, it was sad because like uh, she Akito, Akito knew Sugar was in there. She's like, hey, everybody stay right here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they whispered the, the 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 girl was. She's just like, hey, you know, you know the, 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 your boy in the room. She said, oh, he didn't say <laughs> Everybody stay back. Imagine, yeah. imagine like being on the outside hearing all that because, like, the the first the door had like fell down, so yeah. like, imagine like hearing that, and then you just you just like hear like rustling, you like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, man, I feel bad, man. I feel bad for Karano, man. Let let that man free, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, man. I like, I, like, I ain't chose this life, the life chose me, man. Cause like I I couldn't stand hearing all oh man I'd be mad as hell. Mm-mm, that boy should give me a dog man. I wonder how he I wonder how he like left after that. <laughs> you want that? He see Shigure give us he want to survive. I'll be back. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's crazy, nigga. It, it it reminds me of that scene of Baby Boy when mm-hmm. uh, when when the this uh, what what I don't I don't remember his name in the movie. I feel like it was like Melvin oh, or some shit. shit. Was it Melvin? Yeah. Might have been Melvin. I think it, yeah, yeah, Melvin's not familiar. Uh, yeah, let, let's just say like the stepdad when he came through, when he was cooking eggs butt naked in the house. Yeah, <laughs> he just I can I can imagine Shigure just walking out with his chest out, looking at Karina like, "Hey, you know what? You know what happened, nigga." Yeah, <laughs> that Karina was a real nigga. He'd be like, "Man, I hit it first. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, damn. He put he put her to sleep though. I keep talking. Yeah. I fuck yeah. Tucked in. He's like, yeah, yeah, I did my job. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, imagine imagine like all this shit didn't happen in Fruits Basket. That was another thing I seen from Francesca. She posted a meme. You know the mm-hmm. meme of like the it's like it'll show like two books and one of them's like real thick and it big and the other one's like real thin and small. Yeah. It's like Fruits Basket. If Carano didn't uh didn't fuck uh Rain and then Fruits Basket <laughs> if uh he just stayed with Akito, because I, I feel like it would be like that because like Akito would not be wilding out like this. Yeah, Carano yeah. plays it well though. Like the way he treats like Akito, like he 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 plays it so freaking like well, man. Uh, it's it's mm-hmm. hard being a Carino spot because I can't imagine just getting slapped by this girl I don't even love. Yeah, and he stayed he stayed there for years, it's crazy man. Because like usually like when, when like you're guilt tripping somebody into like in a same relationship, like you usually try to like do everything you can to like be on his good side. But I keep be like, man, like everybody else, you ain't yeah. going nowhere. <laughs> and it's funny that you say that because she knows the curse doesn't affect though, and she's still yeah. like an <laughs> asshole. That, that's funny you say that. Like she don't <laughs> give a fuck. Yeah, uh, he's a yeah. Shout out to Karina, man. He hold it down though. You gonna be free soon? Yeah, he is free, man. That boy free. He just gotta fly, man. See, I feel like he he's just waiting for Shigure to like commit to being with Akito because he's still like odd yeah. with it. 
I think mm-hmm. the minute that he stayed, Shigure stays by Akito's side, he'll be like, oh, you got, you, you handled that? He's like, hey, Nissan, do your shit. Yeah. Yeah, tag me out, man. Tag me out. Yeah, please. <laughs> nigga, my stuff is over, nigga. You get up for the rest of like your life. Dude. I pre- isn't like Shigure the only per- well, I guess, I guess we haven't seen like Akito he like hit like certain members of his Zodiac, but I feel like Shigure is one of the one members that I can't see Akito like abusing. I feel like Shigure was just going <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like it's yeah, I, I don't know if Akito ever physically abused Shigure now that you say that. Because we know it happened with Kareno, happened with Hattori. Yeah. Um, I guess it didn't happen with Hatsuhara, but uh, yeah, yeah. But she, she, don't, she really doesn't. Well, she, she, she hit Yuki that one time at the, that the. Yeah, um, she. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Man, bust that nigga upside the head. It was, it was, it was a looking at nigga. Yeah. <laughs> 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 nigga, Damn. It's so funny because Yuki was like, he was like, man, I'm finna be a good person. I'm gonna stop blaming everybody for my mishaps. I forget forgive you, man. He said, Wait, yeah. what? You hear me? What? <laughs> oh, like, oh God. Oh, Akito just she well. Yeah. QRW Sis said, plus it show Rain's body. Yeah, Rain got oh, a body. Man. She got them things on her, man. I ain't mad at Shigure. Yeah, I'm I'm mad at that nigga, but I like <laughs> it's rain, so I'm like I I just draw the shrug, like it is what it is. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Oh, uh, what we forgot about um the, the the goat man um Mitsura Mitsura man Shigure's out of that man you doubted her you you doubt yeah man you doubted her appearance what you mean I doubted her. Hey, you said she uh Ritsu was gonna be on the back burner man they showing us man they oh. here. Man, she she was in the episode, but didn't even feel like she was in the episode though. She was, I feel like she was just a prop for Shigure to get Akito jealous. Oh yeah, because he shows being loud. He's like, All right, let's go ahead and go. Yeah, like because he, <laughs> he stood he stood in that spot waiting for Akito to get out the car. Like he waited for Akito yeah. to spot on. Then he was like, "All right, let's let's I, move along." Man. When Ritsu was like, Ritsu was like walking away. I feel like he was blowing kisses at Akito. Yep. <laughs> he, just at us. Right. He, to him. he he for sure know he knows what he's doing. Like that's why I say like he probably slept with Rain for something more than just revenge for Akito. Mm. Because he's so meticulous about what he does. Like yeah. everything he does feels like a calculated move. And I can't see him doing something like that off of impulse. Granted, mm. this is for someone he loves, all right? Yeah. So it's understandable that he would do that just out of pure uh like rage and feeling the feelings of jealousy and whatnot so he just wanted to get back to her but i feel like it's something more to that just because this nigga so manipulate ma- manipulative so i feel like it's i feel like he he gained some information or something like that because of because of that incident but, but i feel like if he did why we why we not just tell ring there ring you know what i mean I feel like I feel like he wants to guide every every like his whole thing is he wants to do things but he doesn't want to get involved like personally involved with things so maybe mm-hmm. he figured out something with the curse like I've been saying whatever however it, the curse breaks I feel like it's something grim maybe mm-hmm. a sacrifice or something so I feel like he wants them to figure out what's going on with the curse but it's just something where he doesn't like want to get his hands dirty because even like, remember he did, he didn't want to tell Toru what the Soma curse was initially. Like, I feel like he's just trying to like put all these characters through certain things first. Like he's just, he's, he's like the God for everybody or -hmm. like the puppeteer, but he himself doesn't want to get in the mix of things. Yeah, because I do remember one scene where I think he talked to um, uh, Hattori and he was talking about like how like I don't know how exactly he said it, but he basically was saying like um, I I just want to collect the I just want to collect the rewards after every all the work has been already done for me. Yeah, pretty much it's like you you go ahead and uh, get fucked up by Akito, you know, do your thing with Rain, and once all all that's done, I'm gonna reap the benefits off your hard work. It's funny too because it like. The, the, his like the way he said that is more like the rat in the in like the zodiac story about the rat just following the ox to like yeah. the, the gold. Yeah, yeah. 
the rat jumping on the ox's back and you know him yeah. jumping jumping down and he can say I'm afraid that's, I'm kinda, that's fucked up yeah yeah like, <laughs> you know, I, I ain't gonna lie I can see why the ox and the cat are mad at the rat cause that, that, that's some that, that, that's some slimy stuff yeah the rat said <laughs> told him the wrong time and then Oz yeah. said hey let me get a ride nigga I, I yeah. got you nigga <laughs> I'll be first right? hey, you be first I'll be second I'll make sure I'll be second yeah yeah, yeah. But um, is there anything else that happened in the episode I want to talk about? Uh, not really. Uh, well, it's not. It's not really about. It's kind of about the episode, but it's kind of not. But I think um, one scene from like season one was um, Megumi was talking to like um, Motoko and her group about like the like the way he was trying to preach to them that the way they love Yuki is not like healthy for either of them. Mm. Yeah, and I, and I, and it's kind of it's kind of funny that even though he told them that they they still are going about it the same way. But I guess <laughs> that that scene was more for like um, Hana, like the way she seen Toru. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, the thing about how everybody treats Yuki, and this includes Matoko, who has strong feelings for him, mm. they treat him as a prince, like he can't do no wrong. And then Machi is the person who's going to like tell it how it is. It is something that Yuki. Uh, appreciates because he yeah. does like he doesn't he himself doesn't see him that see himself as that way um so like even with toru she doesn't like treat him as like he's perfect or anything but she also like kind of views uh yuki in this uh divine guess, like, divine yeah, like, yeah yeah like like he he's greater than what he actually is and i think machi is just real down to earth with yuki and that's why yeah. they work so well for each other yeah because unlike toru who kind of like when yuki kind of told her about his uh, his backstory and how he actually feels machi was able to pick up on like immediately like Im- immediately see like who who he really is yeah this is one of my favorite scenes too with machi when um like they were on the stairs and then this one girl machi was with was like oh like she was like fawning over yuki she's just like oh you yeah. know talk about how he's a prince and the machi was like that nigga ain't no prince <laughs> yeah they like you like what would you say <laughs> yeah like they be getting so appalled yeah. and, and, i mean they're trying to bully her at the uh, the school festival yeah they tried to oh, jump yeah. her like you said that yuki wasn't a prince like like it can't be the same like the yuki fan club is damn near the mafia yeah, I think they said like they make up more than half of the the, the student body. <laughs> like they are like serious on some goon shit. They are the cartel, man. You just walk down the hall one day, you gonna get a bag of your head. Yeah, you'll be in the back. You'll be in the back room. We're talking in this in the, the chair. I, I, I've been here. We've been talking to Yuki. Yeah. What I'm out of sense, <laughs> bro. Like a mob boss. <sighs> I could see, I could see that with Motoko too. You, yeah. bro, did you see how fast she booked out of that bitch when she stole the flowers? Oh yeah, she was man track star Motoko on the run. They was doing backflips on the stairs. I was like, nigga, do they <laughs> gotta go through training to be in the Yuki fan club? Hey man, gotta be quick with it, quick decisive with it, bro. Cause like the funny thing about the Yuki fan club too is they have like specialist niggas. Cause I remember there was one girl who was like purpose or like she was like i pick locks i was oh, like yeah. i was like what the <laughs> fuck? i was like these niggas got like they got certain positions like they go they gonna have someone who can hack computers get some yeah. try to get some pictures of yuki they go like they gonna have everything you know mission I, I, I just hope they have a mission impossible episode where like they all try to break into yuki's house take, take some of his stuff well, that, <laughs> that'll be dope uh, a hacker a distraction uh-uh. yeah. And it was also like when they stole the flowers, uh, the rest of the student student base is like, uh, or everybody in Toru's class is kind of like, all right, so what are we gonna do now? And then like at first, like a, at first, Utani's like, hey, Kyo, make these shits. Yeah. <laughs> and then with with Kyo was like, you know, I already got my own, and he saw that some girl stole his shit, so like he got mm-hmm. his own fan base. Yeah. Um, I, I found it funny how Utani like the switch up from Utani. She went from. Uh, let let them niggas be. To when they realized they had to do it themselves, she said, "I right, where hey, them niggas at?" Hey, 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 Hana, come back me up right quick. Let's get these. Hana <laughs> <laughs> the said, "If you need that manpower, I got you." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the first thing they tried to do was sick Hana on them. They said, "Hey, Hana, get this get, yeah, get yeah. the first time Hana was like, "I don't want no personal game," but then she realized she had to do some work. Yeah. Oh, like all right, <laughs> who I got? Who I got? Fuck up. Uh, and they caught the ass too. Also, yeah. Man. 
it, it was so because it, it was funny too because like they were making such a big deal, but it looked like Matoka and them only sold three. I'm like, yeah, I, I can't just make three. <laughs> Guess not. <nigga>. Yeah, <laughs> trying to shit. I don't know how hard is it it is to make no things. Oh, okay, okay, you say that, but the time it took uh Kyo to make one, while Toru was like sad and depressed, took a man like two seconds. I'm like, wait, what? You can do it in two seconds, but you was yeah. complaining about making three. And shit, they might make, waste more energy chasing after them niggas. You saw how fast they were. I want to know how they. I want to know how they got them, cause like, I like, H- Hana has like great stamp stamina, which is funny she, since she doesn't like to do any uh, physical activities. Yeah. Cause like, if you you remember that that bat, like it was a it was the episode where Akito showed up to the school, mm-hmm. and they played badminton oh. after. Yeah. And then, like, everybody was gassed, but Hana was, like, chilling. She was like, all right, time to go home. I have not seen Hana sweat. Yeah. she just be chilling. So, she probably, if she wanted to, she'd probably just hop them niggas down. I tell you, man, she, 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 did, she, she did, like, a, a one-piece conference hockey. Do you down the hall? Who oh, did yeah, it? For everybody sure. Faints. <laughs> everybody just faints. For sure. Uh, uh, uh. That's, a, that's another thing, too. Like, this don't got nothing to do with anything. Um... But you know how Akito doesn't like girls with long black hair? Mm-hmm. It'll be real. F- it, I don't think it will happen, but I think a confrontation between Akito and Hana would be like the best thing ever. Like just to fulfill that meathead type of like, I want to uh, yeah, fight. Yeah. I'm saying they be in the air flying and fighting each other with laser beams. <laughs> yeah, because Akito got some other shit other than her like abnormal strength. Cause yeah, like, like you remember that shit what, what was going on with Kyo, uh, when Akito summoned him, like oh, yeah, she had yeah, like yeah, this yeah. weird like sn- it was like almost yeah it was almost like snakes or something yeah. surrounded Kyo. I don't think it was the snakes. I think it was the actual bonds. Like because I think you know every time the season every time the new season starts, you get this scene like the ropes and the bonds between like the Zodiac members. I think it was the ropes like tightening up. Yeah, it, it may have just been you know there to uh, emphasize that. But like she also had like this purple aura or something like that. So I wonder if it's like a physical manifestation or something. It was funny too because because Kill was talking all Kill was talking all big too. Yuki was like, "Hey yo, don't lose your temper, man. I I got this, man. I got this. first <laughs> time throw away Akito. Hey yo, man, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, <laughs> Akito. I'm sorry. My bad. And she threw the she threw the wind chime at that nigga. Oh yeah, uh, Akito is crazy. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I think that's pretty much it for the episode. Yeah. Um, I'm real interested to see what happens with Reen because now Toru uh, is looking for her. Uh, she wasn't at the college. Uh, I'm yeah. assuming that she's not at Kagura's house. Uh, last time we seen her, she was with Rain, so we don't know if she stayed there for mm-hmm. all this time or what happened to her. But if she did learn some information from Rain, I wonder at what cost it was. Yeah. And, um, you know, I wonder how that how that whole situation is going to go. It, it, it just seems so weird to like ring and like, like check up on Toru. Like she seen like she seen her girl that girl like on the ground collapsing, crying. She ain't say I gotta go. I got skedaddle. Yeah, she said I got shit to do. Yeah, I got access information. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That that'll be an interesting place to go. I, I just want to learn more about Rain in general. Mm-hmm. So this this episode. Well, it's not this episode, but I guess the the hunt Toru is on sets up for a uh, confrontation between those two characters, or maybe three characters, depending on how far Toru goes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I got in the series like prediction. I think that they're going to like redo the bonds. Mm. That's why I think. What do you I think, think, what do you I, think be like, I think it's gonna be like a new promise gonna be made. Oh, okay. Including, including Toru and Kyo. Huh. Hmm. I could do something like that. Because mm-hmm. I, I find it interesting that, like, um, th- this is a little bit, off, not really off talk, but, it's, but like how Toru's kind of like, um, she kind of had abandonment issues as well. Yeah. So I wonder if, like, this new curse will, will kind of help people like Toru, who's kind of like, you know, they're, they're all alone. Like, because I think, like, because Toru's dad died, her mom died, she's basically been all, all, all alone. Yeah, and I could be symbolic if like she started the season like all alone, and, but now she has like bonds between all the Zodiac members. Like she's a part of like part of part of them. Uh, I, I I keep forgetting if I, 
I probably did tell you this. I don't know if I said it on the first podcast, but my prediction is, is something like loose. I always felt like Toru at some point was going to lose her memories mm. um, due to something that she said in episode two, where she said that if, even if she lost her memory, she would make friends with Yuki again. I mm. felt like that was, so, I thought that was like foreshadowing for a future event. Obviously, that that moment happened because of uh, what Yuki went through in the, in the, his past, and it kind of like comforted him because he felt like, you know, Toru's going to be with him through thick and thin. Mm-hmm. But I feel like that could also just be uh, something that happens in the future. Uh, mm-hmm. Toru possibly losing her memories. And maybe maybe then she would have to face some of the trauma in her past. Yeah, I'll, yeah, because I, I can kind of see something like that, kind of like a um, promise, kind of like promise Neverland, where, like she loses all her memories, but she frees the zodiacs. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it can happen even earlier than then because I feel like I feel like like her losing her memories and then recollecting them could lead mm-hmm. to her facing some of the trauma in her past. Hmm. But I don't know. All I know is like shit like her getting over her mother's death has to be talked about. Yeah. And her father that because that is the biggest question mark that we don't know anything about. <laughs> I hope it's not one of the things where like he's just just a regular, regular guy and they just been hyping up for no reason. I'll be mad as hell. Now, for, <laughs> for all they've been hyping up, this nigga better, he better have a big impact on the story for us oh, to I- not know about him for this long. I- I hope I hope we get like a Kyoko um and uh Humph- and uh what's the, what's her Toru's final name? Keep forgetting his name. Yeah, he, uh, he has a name. Yeah, I thought he had a name. I, I always call oh. him. I always I always call him Toru's grandpa. He probably no, no, does no. have a name. No, 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 no. Toru's dad. Oh, Katsuya. Yeah, yeah, Katsuya and Kyo- I want to see that flashback so bad. I want to see how how he, he like changed um the um crimson butterfly. Yeah, yeah. How did he tame that beast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. must have something special. Uh, read some of the comments before we uh tap out. Mm-hmm. Uh, QRW6 said, uh, rain, rain, rain comfort him, is all I'm saying. Light ruler popped up and say, Year, I'm just here to light. Uh, appreciate you, light. Sure. Uh, QR said, I felt like Shigure was in a dark place when he slept with rain, but no excuse. Yuki and Machi both helped develop each other. Agree. <laughs> I forgot about that. Season one applied that to me, but I forgot about it. You losing your memory too, Nate. <laughs> yeah, that's what's... Oh, all right. One last thing. So the, the memory thing is always weird to me because it feels like like it feels like Hat, uh, Hattori controls it very well. Like he has to like take out specific memories. So I'm like, okay, so the kids see Yuki transform into a rat, but can you just take out that memory and they can still be like cool with him, playing with him? I don't know how much he can suppress. Well, but he was able to suppress like most of like his, 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 his. He was able to like remember what he did to his um. What's what's his ex fiance name? Uh, Hana. Hana. He was able to do Hana. Like he was able to take away like most of Hana's trauma and stuff like that. Okay, so because like what what I mean by that is like. Okay, so you're saying um, why couldn't the kids be friends with them again? Yeah. I feel, well, I'm saying, I'm saying, like, like I feel like bes- bes- taking out the rat thing would have been like, like, okay, let's say, say, say they keep the memory up to like when Yuki like met them and it was become let's play, but take out the, take out the rat thing, so that way they'd be they'd be like, oh, I don't know how he finished playing, but oh. we we're still friends. Oh, yeah, you're, you're saying like, why can't he take out the memory of like that specific day and they're still friends or something like that? Yeah. See, I don't know. Like that's why I'm saying I don't know how much of the memories he can suppress. Maybe it's just something that relates to the Zodiacs in total. So they would have to forget Yuki completely for, for it to work. I, like, I got, we, I got, I got. we don't, we don't know like the details of that. So that's something that like, yeah, it, yeah. When you bring that up, like, I guess, um, not knowing like what specifically he can wipe out, uh, that could create some, uh, I don't want to call it plot holes, but it, it, it leaves us with questions, certain questions about like, mm-hmm. you know, why could he do this or that? But I, I just feel like that's a, that's, I don't think that's going to be something they explain properly. So yeah, yeah I think, I think that's just something we got to live with, to be honest. 
Yeah. I got some extra questions, but it'll be off stream. It'll be off stream. I don't make this longer than what it has to be. Oh, yeah. Appreciate yeah. everybody who showed up. QRW6, Light Rulers, Darius, Yandere, Shiki, uh, Stoney, Rant. I think, was it Trent? Then I, oh, yeah. I see. I see. Yeah, yeah. Uh, appreciate everybody who showed up. Next podcast will be next week. Uh, same time if we don't run into issues. If we do, I'll let you, I'll let you guys know. But mm-hmm. 